Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm here to help you learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this ice cream pool themed cake. Now I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator. I have videos showing you how I bake, fill, ice, refrigerate cakes, make the icing, make the fondant. All of that is going to be linked down in the description. And I will also link down there any tools that I use and any other videos that I reference. And I will also let you know how much I charged for this cake. So let's get started. I have Gumtex powder, Tylos powder, CMC powder, it's all the same thing. I mix this into all of my fondant. I only use marshmallow fondant. When you mix this in and you knead it together, roll it out, let it sit, it's gonna help the fondant set a little harder and make it so much easier to work with. I will link this below. I have a piece of non-slip pad underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around, a wet paper towel with an X-Acto knife and a Dresden tool and a little bit of water. And I rolled out my fondant uh, a little thick, like a quarter of an inch thick. I printed this out, I measured my cake, I printed it out the size that I wanted to be, and I'm doing my trace cut and smooth method to make all of these decorations out of fondant. So I'm carefully tracing that onto the fondant to transfer the line. And then since this is a thicker piece of fondant, I'm just putting the tip of the X-Acto blade into the fondant to create a guideline. And then once I have that done, I'm gonna stick the tip all the way down to the cutting board and cut this out. It's just so much easier if you create the guideline first, that way you're not gonna mess up the fondant. And then once that is completely cut out, I'm gonna flip it over, take my fingers and just smooth out my cuts. The, your cuts are always gonna be a little jagged whenever you cut anything out of fondant. And look, that green is Dresden tool green. <laughs> But just take your time, take your fingers and your tools and smooth out your cuts and make it look pretty. So now I have this thin black fondant and I'm doing the same trace cut and smooth method for the lenses. Trace it onto the fondant, cut it out. Now when I have thinner fondant, I can just cut it out right away. I don't have to make a guideline. And again, take my fingers and smooth my cuts. And then I'm going to get a little bit of water on the back and stick these down. And I'm just going to use my fingers and my tools to make sure they are in the right place. And then I want to realign that on top of the picture and set that aside to dry. Now I rolled out the pink fondant a little thick and I'm gonna make the float. And again, I measured my cake and I measured, you know, I make, made sure I printed this out the size that I wanted it to be. Now I'm tracing, make sure you trace the inner pieces, the outer pieces as well. And for the beak, look, I am tracing on the pink fondant on the inside of this black and white part because I'm gonna put a piece of black and white fondant on top and I want it to be a little thinner underneath. It'll make sense as I go along. <laughs> so now I'm cutting this uh, center piece out first. It's so much easier to cut the center pieces out and I made a guideline like I showed you before. And do you see how I'm using the tip to kind of pull the fondant in so I don't mess up that little float, right? So I can get that piece out and then after I get it out, I smooth it out and again I'm just putting the tip of my blade into the fondant to create the guideline and once that's done I'm going to stick the tip all the way down to the board and cut it out. And again anytime I cut anything out of fondant I'm going to take my time, use my tools, use my fingers, smooth my, my cuts, flip it over, smooth it from the back, smooth it from the front. So it's trace it on the fondant, cut it out, smooth my cuts. And taking my Dresden tool and just deepening those inner details and I was looking at the picture there's like a little line that goes along the bottom so I was just making that little line as well. And now I have some thin black fondant and I am tracing the beak on there and I found a piping tip that was the same size as the pupil. Cut that out and smooth it. And then I'm gonna cut the beak out and smooth it. So guys, it's the same thing for all these decorations. Trace it, cut it out, smooth my cuts. <laughs> and now I have some thin white fondant and I'm tracing that upper part of the beak and then I found another piping tip that was the same size as the eye and cut that out. And get a little bit of water behind the pupil and stick that to the white part of the eye and cutting out the top part of the beak, get a little bit of water behind it. I have the picture close so I can make sure I'm putting this in the right space. And do you see how I cut that pink a little smaller so the black and white part would cover it, right? So now it makes sense. <laughs> and I'm just getting some water behind all of these and sticking it down. Realign that on top of the paper and let's set that aside to dry. Now I'm making the sun, so I have some yellow fondant rolled out. Again, has that Tylos powder in it. It's rolled out about a quarter of an inch thick, and I trace that inner circle and the outer circle, and then just tracing each of those little rays. 
And then I'm going to take my Dresden tool and just deepen those lines that I made. And again, this is thicker fondant, so I am creating the guideline. And then sticking my tip all the way down to the board and cutting this out. And then use my tools and my fingers to smooth my cuts. And realign that back on the picture and let's set that aside. And then I cut my finger, so I was so annoyed I had to wrap it up and put a glove on it. <laughs> but I have that little strip cutter. I will link that in the description. And we're going to make a striped number topper. So I printed that number out the size that I wanted to be again. And I'm getting this thin fondant on here. And I actually flip it upside down. I press the fondant on there. And then I use that Dresden tool or whatever tool you want to use to really press those down and just make sure it's cutting into the fondant. And then I use my hand just to really push it in there. It's just easier to do it this way than to try to press it down and cut it out from the top. <laughs> and if these don't come out, then I just use my Dresden tool or whatever I can just to pry these out of the little cavities, if you will. And then I have some thin white fondant here and I just want to gently trace this number one on here just to make sure that I cover enough space with those stripes and I'm getting water on that entire thing. And I wanted to put these stripes on an angle so you could do them straight, you could do them on an angle, whatever you want. But remember that white fondant is wet so I'm just putting one color down and I cut these because I didn't need them to be super long. And then I am putting the yellow one right next to the pink one and I'm using my tools and my fingers just to get that in place. And I'm making sure that there's no white showing in between so I'm putting it exactly next to the one above it. And I'm just repeating this pattern the whole way down. And when that's done, I want to trace the number one on here, but I can't use my Dresden tool because do you see how it messes up the lines? So now I'm going to use my needle tool instead, and I'm poking a dotted line around the entire number one. So that will give me a line that I can follow to cut out. And when I cut it out, again, I'm using the, just the tip of my X-Acto knife on the inside of those dots that I made to create a guideline so I won't mess up those lines. And then putting my tip all the way down to the board to cut them out. And again, just going to smooth my cuts so everything looks nice and pretty. Now I have some thicker white fondant, so that's about a half of an inch thick. Flip that over, get some water on the back, and I'm going to place this down on top of that fondant. And again, this is thicker fondant. Are you guys, I always feel like I repeat myself, but this is how you learn. So I'm using the tip of my knife and just creating the guideline. Once I have the guideline, stick the tip all the way down and cut it out. Then I'm going to flip it over and smooth it from the back, then smooth it from the front. And now I want to get a skewer in here. You want to twist it in like you're screwing it in and I'm sticking it right in the center of that white fondant. That's why I rolled it out really thick so I can get the skewer in here. Flip it over, make sure it's not poking out the front or the back. And then I'm going to set that aside on a cutting board to dry. Now, I was so annoyed my camera stopped working for some reason, so I wasn't filming as I was making this name, but I did the same thing. I put the name on top of that pink fondant, traced it, cut it out, and then I put that pink fondant on the white fondant and then traced a an outline on it. And I'm getting a little bit of water on the back of that white fondant, and I'm going to do the same thing. I flipped that green fondant upside down and then just transferred it onto that fondant. I'm just trying to get these little um, outlines on here, so I'm carefully cutting an even green border around the entire thing and smooth my cuts and let's set that aside on a cutting board to dry. Now I'm making the watermelon slice. I have these round cutters here and I rolled out my fondant about a quarter of an inch thick and it does have that Tylos powder in it. And I'm just trying to figure out what size that I want to use. I'm using one that's slightly bigger than the other. So I'm cutting a piece out and then do you see how I'm using the other slightly larger round cutter to cut that little rind out? And then I'm using a slightly smaller cutter to cut a slightly smaller rind. I hope this makes sense. I would just have to, I would need more time to explain this in detail, but you can get the gist of what I'm doing. And then I'm using a slightly smaller cutter to cut the pink part out. Getting a little bit of water down and then sticking that to the teal piece. And then I'm getting water down on the pink part and sticking that to the white part. 
And now I'm just using my pizza cutter to create a guideline. I don't want to mess up this fondant. And I cut the ends with my X-Acto knife. And now I can cut this out so I'm not going to mess it up. And there's a simple watermelon slice. Now I need to make the seeds. I have this little cutter. I got that at a cake show. I don't even know if they make that. But you could just cut out little circles if you want to and, and try to bring them to a point. Um, and then I just got a little bit of water behind each one and stuck that down. Easy peasy watermelon slice. Let's set that aside. Now I'm making the jimmies, or you can call them sprinkles, but I call them jimmies. So I'm doing the same thing, making those little strips. And now I'm cutting these about, I don't know, is that an inch wide? And then I'm cutting each of those into three pieces. So I just want them to look like really big jimmies or sprinkles, if you will. This will make sense when I put them on the cake. And I'm doing that many times for all of the colors and setting those aside on the board. Now, I'm gonna be handling these cakes. I wanna switch the bottom tier to a bigger cake drum, so whenever I handle my cakes, my hands are always clean. <laughs> so I have this foil-covered cake drum that I made. I have a video showing you how I make those, and I will link that in the description. I'm getting some icing down, and then I got my cake out of the refrigerator. That's been in the fridge for about 24 hours. That icing is solid, I'm not gonna mess it up. Flip it upside down, remove that other cake drum, and put the bigger one down, and then place the cake on top. So I just need a little more decorating space, so I wanted a bigger drum. Now I want to stack the cake, and I'm getting my ruler in there and marking my straws with a Sharpie marker, how long the straw should be, and I'm cutting that marker off and putting the straws in the bottom tier, pressing that down, and I want to make sure that it is level and getting some icing down. Now I have a video where I show you how I stack cakes, and I will link that in the description. It goes into detail. All these tools that I use to stack will be linked in the description as well. That cardboard circle is going to sit a top the straws and I want to make sure that it's level and it's hanging down on the left side a little bit so I need to lift that up so I'm picking that top tier off getting a little buttercream on the left side and setting that back down and voila now the cake is level <laughs> so now I'm going to dowel the center of the cake down into the cake drum so it doesn't shift and then cover that hole that I made with some buttercream I want to make the water that goes on the cake board. I have some white icing and some teal coloring, and I'm just putting like four drops in there. I'm not mixing it the whole way. I want to have a little color variation in there. And then I'm going to take a little scoop of that icing out, and I'm just putting this around the edges because I'm going to do sand a little closer to the cake. So I'm just taking a glob of icing. Glob sounds gross, but <laughs> it's just a glob of icing, and pressing that down onto the outer edge of the cake board. And when I have that done, I'm just refining it, making sure that's pressed all the way down to the edge. And then I want a little more variation in the color. So I got a little drop of that icing color on the tip of that spatula. And do you see how I'm just randomly pushing it down onto that icing just to deepen the color and... I don't know, I just feel like it makes it look a little better this way. You don't want to use too much. Look, just a little drip, and I'm tapping it around and then blending it in, kind of like makeup, <laughs> and just giving a little like light and dark variation. And now I want to add the sand. So I already have them, the sand stored in this container. What I did, I got blonde Oreos. I put the entire cookie, the entire batch of them, into my food processor, and I, and I blended it up until it became like a sandy texture and I just keep it stored in this container. So I'm taking a little teaspoon and just pouring that between that icing and the cake. And that looks good. I'm going to put that back in the fridge. I have a cutting board and a piece of wax paper and I have a sugar cone here and I'm going to make the little ice cream cake ball, if you will. So I have some cake scraps here. There's already some American buttercream icing in that little tub, and I'm just putting some cake in that tub, and then I'm going to take my knife and just mix that all together. So I'm mixing the cake and the icing, making a giant cake ball, if you will. <laughs> and then I want to scoop that out and form it into a little ball, and I'm going to stick that back down on that wax paper and put that in the freezer. Make sure that it's the right size so the cone fits on top, and I'm going to put that in the freezer for about 45 minutes. Now I'm making the bottom border for the top tier. I have that ribbon cutter. I rolled out that yellow fondant really long and I'm just cutting a ribbon and I'm going to set that aside until I'm ready to use it. All right, now I was so annoyed because I filmed myself putting this ice cream cone on the top of the cake and for some reason I can't put it into my iMovie. <laughs> so 
what happened is, do you see how that drip is? I just don't like how that looks. So I want to remove this from the cake. So I put that on there and I put it back in the fridge and it solidified for about an hour. And I was like, I hate how this looks. So I'm getting that really thin spatula underneath. The icing is solid. That cake just came out of the fridge. So I'm not going to mess it up. But do you see how I'm getting that spatula underneath it and carefully lifting it off of the cake? because I don't want to do this all over again. And again, this is me being extra, but I just don't like the way that it looks. So I'm removing that cone and there was a little skewer in there and I'll show you what I do as I put this back together. But I'm peeling this, um, it's like a candy melt ganache off of that frozen cake ball. And I just have to throw all of that away because I have to start all over. <laughs> so I'm just getting rid of all of that ganache and I can save that cake ball that I made and I put that back in the freezer while I remade this orange ganache. So I have this bag of yellow candy melts because I didn't have any more orange. So I poured the entire thing in there and I'm putting that in the microwave for about a minute to melt it. I got my cake out of the refrigerator. So remember the icing is cold, everything is solid. I'm not gonna mess it up. I got some piping gel around the perimeter and I'm wrapping that border around that bottom part and I cut it where it meets and press it together. And I'm using my palette knife just to press it down so it meets the the top of that bottom tier. Now I'm getting a little bit of piping gel behind each of these jimmies or sprinkles and just haphazardly sticking these on the top tier, making sure that no piping gel is sticking out. I have to remake the ganache. That candy is melted and I am using some gel coloring. I added some orange. Whenever you add gel coloring to candy melts, it's going to make it seize. Seizing means it's going to make it really thick, but that's okay because we are going to thin it out with a little bit of water. So I'm adding just a tiny bit of room temperature water at a time just to start to thin this out. Now I know this isn't good for video purposes. I have a video where I go into detail showing you how I make candy ganache for a drip cake and I will link that in the description description but I'm carefully just adding a little bit more water I add a little bit more orange and some a teeny bit of brown just to deepen it up so it matched the colors of her invitation and I just want to get it to a like thin consistency so when I pour it on top of that cake ball it's going to drip down the cake so you can see it's hard to explain how thin it needs to be but I'm lifting that spatula up and it's running down so I know it's the right consistency so I put that back on top of the cake the cake is cold I'm not going to mess it up and then I can spoon this down here so it's going to drip down the side of that cake ball and it's going to drip onto the cake before when I did it it just didn't drip onto the cake right and it didn't look like it was melting it just looked like a weird ball this is why I have to start all over. <laughs> so I wanted to drip down the side of the cake just a little bit. And you see, I'm just keep taking um, spoonfuls of this ganache and pouring this down the cake ball so it looks like it's melting onto the cake. And then I just want to add um, a little drip detail, if you will, where the cone is going to be. And your ganache can't be too thick and it can't be too thin. You just gotta get it to the right consistency so it drips but it holds its shape. And again, I explained this in that video that I will link below. I'm sticking a skewer in on an angle and then putting that cone down so it's not gonna fall off. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. And now I got that back out of the fridge and I wanna play this game of where am I gonna put everything on the cake? So I'm just taking the decorations and like holding them up. Like, where does that look good? Where does that look good? I think I'll put that there and I think I'll put this here. And you know, I'm just like holding these up. So I had no idea where I'm gonna put everything. And I just play this little game of what looks good where and I stick that down. <laughs> And now I'm trying to figure out where this watermelon slice will go. I'm like, I think I made this a little too big. I don't know where to put this. It might look good there. All right, so let's figure this out. I'm pulling that off of the cake and I'm figuring out where it's touching the cake and getting some icing behind it. And then I can press that against the cake and I'm gonna use a clean paintbrush just to remove any excess icing that's seeping out at the sides. And then I'm getting a toothpick on either side of the skewer. That way the number won't twist when I put it in the top of the cake. And I'm pushing that down. And getting a little bit of icing behind those glasses where they're touching the cake and pushing that back down as well, removing any excess icing. 
Now I'm getting two toothpicks behind the sun so I can anchor it down into the cake so that it's gonna hang on there like a picture would. Um, and I'm pushing the toothpicks into the cake, remove the sun so I don't push the toothpicks through the front of the fondant. And then I'm pressing that down on there and anchoring them on the toothpicks. And I have a little bit of icing behind there to help it stick to the cake as well. Now I'm making clouds. This fondant rolled out about a quarter of an inch thick and you see I'm just cutting wavy lines into a cloud formation and then smoothing that with my fingers and I cut a bunch of them out. So I'm just doing different sizes, different shapes and I'm gonna put these around the bottom tier. So cutting them out, smoothing them with my fingers and then I'm just gonna set all of those aside on a board to dry. And now I'm getting some icing behind the watermelon slice and sticking that on. And then I got super annoyed because I felt like there is way too much pink teal, you know, in the watermelon slice, in the name, in that raft, in the glasses. And I feel like I need some more orange down there. I did not like the color distribution. I felt like there was orange in the ice cream cone and there needed to be more orange on the cake. So I took the name off and I am doing this trace cut and smooth on this orange fondant to change the pink part of the name to orange. So again, I traced it on there and then I'm cutting the letters out, smoothing my cuts with my fingers and my tools. And then I need to carefully peel this pink part of the name off. So I'm getting my X-Acto knife underneath the pink part and lifting it up and it breaks off and I'm just removing it. So just being really careful not to mess up the white part. I'm just peeling the pink part away. Now I'm going to put the orange part on top of the white and then get a little bit of water underneath the letters and stick it down. So I'm just doing the O and the E and I want to stick that down to make sure I get it in the right place. So I'm trying to get an even white border around the orange and then I'm lifting up the L and the H and sticking some water underneath and then under the K, right? So I'm just trying to make sure I get this in the right position using my tools to realign it on there and that looks good. So now I'm getting some icing behind it and putting that down. And I feel like it just looks like so much better. It just breaks up the color a little bit. There's not too much pink on the cake. And getting some icing behind all of these clouds and sticking them to the cake as well. And now I'm measuring the ribbon that I'm wrapping around the cake drum and cutting that to size and getting a little bit of non-toxic glue around that cake board and I got it on the back of that ribbon as well and I'm pressing the ribbon around the cake drum where it overlaps get a little more glue down and press that down and then I felt like it was a little empty and it still needed a little bit more to the left of the name so I'm making a beach ball I have a video where I go into detail on how I make this and I will link that below but I'm tracing exactly on the lines on the inside coming to a point in the middle and then I'm tracing on the outside because I'm going to cut this to size so this will make sense as I do it, but I'm doing the opposite sides the same color. And so I'm tracing them on the fondant, cut them out, smooth my cuts. And then I'm doing the same thing for the orange. I'm tracing exactly on the line, bringing it to a point in the middle and then tracing to the outside of the circle on the edge and doing it for the opposite side as well. Cutting them out, smoothing my cuts. And then again, doing the same thing for the yellow. And you can see how it pieces together. Now I have some thin white fondant and I'm gonna put this down on that fondant. So I'm lifting up one of the pieces. I don't wanna get water at the point because I'm cutting the center out. I don't want the point sticking down. This will make sense. So get a little bit of water behind it and stick that down and then get water behind the next one and stick it down and make sure the point lines up. It doesn't matter if the edges line up because I'm gonna cut it down to size. So just doing that for all of them, lining up the points getting water behind it, lining up the points, and then sticking it down to piece it together. Now I found a round cutter the size of that white part, and I'm just pressing that in there slightly to create the line, and I'm just using my knife to cut those pieces off. That's why I did not glue down those tips. That way I could easily remove them, and then cut a white circle, get a little bit of water down um, in that little 
cavity right there and I'm going to stick this white circle on top. I hope that makes sense. It's hard to explain, <laughs> but you see what I'm doing. And now I want to cut this to size. So I found a circle cutter that was the right size and I'm cutting it down. So you can see why it didn't matter what it looked like on the outside because I cut it down to size and smooth my cuts. And now I'm going to set that aside for about 20 minutes so it could dry flat. And then I put it on the cake. So I found where it's going to touch the cake, get a little bit of icing behind it and stick that down. And here is the cake. How adorable is that? So there you go. I just love this cool little cake design and it was based off the invitation that she gave me and she wanted it to be in these colors. So that's why I did that white background and I stuck with those four colors that were in the balloons. Now you saw that I did have a little bit of difficulty with this cake. Number one with that stinking ice cream melted ice cream cone. I hated the way the drip looked like it wasn't melting onto the cake. So at least you were able to see how I could easily take that off and start all over and make it a lot nicer. I'm sorry that my other video just wasn't uploading that I couldn't show you how I originally made the ice cream, but you can get the gist of it. And also how I changed the color of the name. So things don't always go right when I make these cakes and I'm really weird about color distribution. There was way too much pink and green focused in one area and I like to have it distributed throughout the cake. So I think it just looked a lot better with that orange name. And also you saw how I looked at the cake when I thought I was finished. It needed that beach ball in that space. So sometimes I have an idea for a design, then I start to put it together, then I don't like things and I just switch it up until I do. The top tier of this cake is a two layer torted five inch and the bottom tier is a two layer torted seven inch. And I have a video talking about when I tort and when I don't tort my cake layers and I will link that in the description. But it feeds like 25 to 30 people. And how much did I charge? This one was $425. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know, leave it in the comments below. And just a reminder, I now have a Cake Academy membership. There are three tiers to the membership program and the top two tiers have exclusive access to my Facebook group where we are learning so much in that group. I would love to have you aboard. I'm gonna link that information in the description. Please like this video if you liked it and if you are enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link is in the description. And I'd love it if you would keep touch on socials and check out my website. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.